The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the third series uh, together with Tatiana Brandt. Today, uh, the topic is when should periodontal instruments be replaced and working with sharp and free instruments. Uh, I want to remind you that in case you have missed the first two parts of the webinar series, they are now available on our website and you can view them uh, there, the recordings of those webinars. Also, um, you will be muted throughout the webinar and we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. You will have a chance to ask questions and you can, throughout the webinars, you can type in your questions on the right hand side. There's a, a field to type in your questions. Also, if you prefer to ask your question verbally, there's a chance to do so by clicking the raise your hand symbol on the right hand side. Uh, by doing so, we're able to unmute you and you can ask your questions, but that will also take place in the Q&A session uh, afterwards. So, I think we're ready to get started, so I will hand over to Tatiana Brandt. Uh, please go ahead, Tatiana, and start your presentation. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the last part of uh, webinars about uh, periodontal and instruments. Today, I'm going to explain when your periodontal instruments should be replaced. I would like to thank you for all the questions I received after the first and the second parts. It was very, very nice. I hope you enjoy this part too. So, when should periodontal instruments be replaced? You can find some information about me on this slide for later questions. As you already know, dental practitioners are at very high risk to develop musculoskeletal disorders in hands, wrists, and fingers, both in pain, numbness, and other symptoms which lead to loss of work time and early retirement. Hands and wrists are the most prevalent areas for pain with dental hygienists. 60 up to 69%. Dental hygienists suffer from pain in the hand and wrist region more often than other dental professionals do. The good news about this is that dental practitioners can reduce their risk of developing of musculoskeletal disorders in hands and wrists by following these recommendations. Try to schedule your patients with heavy calculus. Take appropriate breaks and stretching. I mean change activities. Changing activity is nearly equal to breaks. Select large diameter and lightweight instruments. Scale with rigid instruments for initial debridement. Use air polishing devices instead of rubber polishing. Avoid vibration in ultrasonic. Ensure proper fit of your gloves and ensure that instruments are kept sharp or work with sharp and free instruments. And today is the last point I'd like to focus on. But two years ago, I read this article, why your employer should care about dull instruments. And this article inspired me to do my own literature research about periodontal instruments. This results in four articles for Danish Hygienist magazine in Denmark and Norway. They also had two main points, a frequent cause of patient complaint and in the worst case scenario, the patient not coming back to the practice. Is there a negative experience with a dental hygienist, a dentist being, being heavy-handed? 
The reason is rarely the practitioner's scaling technique or skills, but the usage of dull scaling instruments. After talking to patients, my students and hygienists, I have found that the number one reason why patients leave do not come back is hygienists being too rough. When dull instruments are used, the operator's grasp is tight and more lateral pressure is applied to tooth surface. This is exactly the reason for your patient have a bad experience. And this is rarely because of the hygienist skill level, but rather being forced to work with dull, beat up instruments. You can probably remove some calculus with instruments shot in this photo, but knowing that you are going to damage both your hands and your patient's root surface, applying too much pressure. Using one down instruments leads to ineffective periodontal treatment and potential patient harm. I know that uh, as clinicians, it can be challenging to work instrument sharpening into our already busy schedules, but maintaining the sharpness of periodontal instruments is very important. Properly sharpened instruments reduce operator fatigue, improve calculus removal, save time, enhance tactile sensitivity, and minimize patient discomfort. Less pressure is required with sharp instruments, which improves control of the instrument and decreases the likelihood of a damaging, root damaging surface. This increase in pressure when you work with uh, dull instruments is uncomfortable to the patient and makes the clinician seem heavy-handed. In addition, sharp instruments decrease the probability of burnishing calculus by biting into the deposit and not shaving it over. Dentistry IQ, which is a leading internet source of information that provides dental professionals with expert articles that focus on patient treatment technology updates, dental equipment, published results of instrument survey. This instrument survey opened up with a questions about the frequency of sharpening instruments. The same question I asked the Danish dental hygienist last year, and the results were alarming. I will show you the results later. Today, I want you to answer one of these questions survey questions. How often do you really sharpen your hand, periodontal hand instruments? And I would like to uh, ask Dan to help me with all questions. Okay. Thank you, Tatiana. I've now uh, launched the poll. So you should now be able to vote. Uh, on the screen, you find the question, how often do you sharpen each of your instruments? And the uh, options are every day, once a week, every two weeks, once per month, or once every four or six months. I will let the question stay for a while, so please provide your answer. Okay. Last chance to answer, and I will close the poll now and share the results. So the results are, just a second, 
thirty percent uh, replied once every four or six months. Uh, Twenty-three percent uh, answer once a week. Seventy percent answered every two weeks. Uh, also, seventeen percent once per month, and thirteen percent and replied every day thank you dan and uh, this is not surprising i want to share the results of two other uh, service uh, the results we had in the use as um, which was made by um, uh, uh, as site i presented before showed that 22 percent sharpen each instrument every day 18 sharpen once per week, 20 sharpen every two weeks, 15 sharpen once per month, 15 sharpen once every or two, three months, 6% sharpen once every four to six months, and four sharpen once a year. Yes, it's it was nearly the same, uh, but it's so even worse for Danish dental hygienists. The explanation of this big difference could be probably that we missed one but important question. Do you use sharpened free instruments? Because a lot of Danish hygienists already do. They use uh, sharpened free instruments. But uh, when you look here, it's only 9% who sharpen instruments every day and about 43% sharpen instruments once every four to six months. So conclusion is still very alarming. Many clinicians work with very dull instruments because it's, it's just not enough to sharpen uh, to sharpen once uh, every four to six months. It's nearly half of Danish practitioners do. So the question is, is it just a coincidence or a clear correlation between the prevalence of pain in dental hygienist hands? We talked about 60% and wrist regions and the lack of sharpening of periodontal instruments. It looks for me as a clear correlation. Another question is, how often should periodontal instrument be sharpened? because I was asked my colleagues and we are not all agree about the answer. And I'm going to share the right answer with you afterwards. But uh, then would you help me with another poll and uh, ask the participants about how often should periodontal instruments be sharpened, please? Yes. So I've now launched the poll uh, and the question is how often should periodontal instruments be sharpened and uh, answer options are every day, once per week, once per month. Ah, there seems to be a, a mistake in the poll and uh, the last one is at the sign of operative insufficiency of dullness. Unfortunately, there's a slight glitch in the poll and uh, there's a two times the once per month uh, reply options. And let's leave the poll for a short while. Please provide your answer. Okay, I'm going to close the poll and share the replies with you. So the results are here. So 46% replied at the sign of operative insufficiency dullness. So almost 50% replied this. Then uh, the second uh, largest amount of answer received every day, and it was 26%, 14% uh, uh, replied once per month, 
and 11% once per week. And I want to apologize again that there was this slight glitch in the in the poll. But these are the replies. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. And uh, it is a little bit surprising because uh, in spite of that, we know that we need to sharpen instruments as the first sign of dullness. We don't do it. Why? So let's go further to another slide. Instruments are only designed to last a certain amount of time. However, the average lifespan of instrument is difficult to answer as it depends on many factors, including frequency of, um, um, sorry, in the frequency of use. It takes approximately 15 strokes on a, an instrument to begin losing its uh, sharp edge, where 45 strokes start to create a rounded cutting edge. So instrument may need to be sharpened after every patient. If you see a high volume of patients with significant calculus. What we know from the survey is that uh, about 80, 90% recountering, which means not shaping, but recountering the instruments instead for light everyday sharpening which is much better solution for the effectiveness and for preventing hand injuries. In other words, it's good to keep in mind that the 18% or more of all practitioners sharpen very dull instruments instead of keeping them sharp. I will try to explain the difference between two types of dullness. It's, maybe it's going to be a little bit technical, but I will try to do my best. Uh, because there is two types of dullness and two types of sharpening. The uh, red color in figure one illustrates the facial surface of instrument. Number two illustrates the lateral surface and number three shows uh, cutting edges between lateral and facial surfaces. A cutting edge is established when two surfaces meet. And the cutting edge is defined by the union of the lateral and facial surfaces. The goal of instrument sharpening is to restore a sharp cutting edge when it lost sharpness and to avoid excessive wear of the instrument. Let's see what happens when we don't sharpen often enough. Dulling of the fine sharp edge is a normal outcome of scaling and root planning. When you do periodontal treatment, this results in wear of cutting edge of periodontal instruments. That is normal. And as I said before, approximately 15 working strokes with your scale accurate produce a slightly rounded cutting edge, where 45 strokes create a very rounded cutting edge. You have slightly dull instruments after 45 strokes, but more than 45 strokes leads to appearing of the more clear third surface as shown here, called bevel. And the wider bevel becomes, the more metal you need to remove from the lateral surface when you sharpen. And of course, wear resistance of instruments depends on the metal the instrument is produced of, which is different in different manufacturers. It is easier to sharpen an instrument whose cutting edge just, just lost its sharpness than to wait until instrument is glossly dull. That means that there are two different approaches to maintain instruments. Keeping instruments sharp when you only use six to 10 strokes with a sharpening stone after each patient, versus honing technique, where you're sharpening a dull instrument with a white bevel. When your instrument gets very dull, you send them to professional services or maybe sharpen yourself, using a lot of strokes and time on the process and removing a lot of metal from the lateral surfaces. The result is, your instrument is getting much thinner. And when you don't do it, 
you continue, you just continue working with very dull instrument and damage your hands. This is what instrument service showed. And this drawing is uh, from a very old article, but it still lasts. Illustrates the cutting edge of the working end with a third surface, bevel. The timing of sharpening is very important. If you have time every day to take care to maintain consistently sharp instruments, then sharpening will not require much metal removal. If you don't have time and wait until they are extremely dull, then you will need to spend more time sharpening to recreate the sharp edge. Many sharpening strokes will remove more of the metal. And um, in addition, if you are not good at sharpening technique and your previous sharpening is not precise, then not only a sharp edge be required, the whole shape of the working end will need it to be recounted to look like the original instrument. And this, I wouldn't recommend this as a retipping of the instrument. So we need to understand that instruments should be resharpened as the first sign of dullness, when the instrument stops emitting the typical stretching sound during instrumentation. Sickle scales, grades, and periodontal files should be sharpened after each use or as needed during periodontal instrumentation. I do it myself, but uh, I know there, there are very, very few practitioners in, uh, practitioners in Denmark who do it. Instruments should be sharpened lightly after each use. And when i talking about lightly, it's just five, six, maybe 10 strokes. That's enough. It doesn't take a lot of time. I would say at least once a day by one who is good about sharpening techniques. Manual sharpening is an effective method for, for preserving instrument shape and contour. It is a method of choice for refreshing instrument place because we are not really resharpening, we are just removing the spur, just metal spawns. If you prefer to sharpen with mechanical devices, you still need to have some practice. Sharpening with LM Ronda Plus is uh, quite easy to learn. You can adjust different speeds of uh, mounted stones for sharpening and for recountering. With any sharpening technique, you need to be careful to control the pressure used when sharpening. If you have little to no control of the amount of pressure, the instrument can be ruined. Heavy pressure removes more metal at a faster pace, and losing width and plans of the instrument can result in breakage of the instrument being, yeah, being rented in effective for calculus removal. Purchasing instruments that maintain their age longer may extend their, I, I mean modern instrument, uh, may extend their lifespan for a certain amount of time. Instruments that never need sharpening are also an option. However, they must be thrown away when they become dull. So what is the main reason for the lack of sharpening? We know that we need to sharpen, but we don't sharpen. Is it a lack of time, a lack of awareness, a lack of sharpening skills and experience? I believe that is all the above. And it's a very good correlation because damage is in our hands in working with dull instruments, don't you see? So if you don't have a possibility to sharpen at the first sign of dullness yourself, you need to consider to have one responsible person at your work and place who maintains the instruments regularly. Or consider working with sharpened free instruments. I personally use a combination of different instruments. I love doing the initial debriefment with uh, quite rigid instruments but prefer working with LM sharp diamond when I'm doing the regular scaling and scaling of narrow pockets, when I need to use mini or micro scales and grades. They keep longer and always remain sharp. These instruments are made from exceptionally durable special metal alloy, and its wear resistance is enhanced by a protective micro-membrane coating. Um, these instruments uh, retain the original size and shape, and it saved me time. 
and they are preserving my hands and very comfortable for the patients. You cannot sharpen this instrument. Sharpening removes the coating and the weakness the tip. And so, <clears throat> the functionality of the instruments is decreased. If you wish to resharpen the uncoated LM Super Steel, offers you the ultimate wear resistance too. According to independent research studies, the wear resistance of LM curates is significantly better than that uh, of the comparative instruments. Uh, I wouldn't recall the all articles uh, I read about it, but uh, I would recommend you to look uh, at the last one I refer on this page, because lifetime of instruments depends on wear resistance, which is different for different manufacturers. So, this study I recommended you to read is from 2016. It's quite new one. The rare properties of coated steel dental curates were studied here by using a customized mechanical device simulating motion and load of dental curates against human teeth. I, I like that it that were human teeth involved. It's more like in the practice. And the rare surfaces were studied, and the study showed that the with the optimized combination of uh, substrate steel and the uh, very resistant coating, uh, reduction of um, the way it was about uh, 82 percent. So it was very, very nice uh, result comparing with um, the instruments of another manufacturer. But uh, it better that you try, if you are interested, to, to read these art art articles yourself. It's uh, easy to be found on PubMap or uh, Antra databases, and you can see the reference here. So, in spite of industrial development of uh, instruments very resistant, a magic, everlasting instrument is not there yet, because nothing, nothing lasts forever. When do we need uh, to replace our periodontal instruments? When a working end becomes seen from use and sharpening, the instrument should be discarded. Some research study reports that a 20% reduction in size results in a significant reduction in working and strength. So when the contour of the tip is changed when you are using your crate, and it begins to look like a scale you need to replace. So what is the average lifespan of hand instruments that are used and sterilized at least once per day? I would say still say the main rule is if 20% of the instrument blade width or length is reduced, it's time to retire the instrument. And another very important thing, the average life of a steel scale or curate is approximately 6 to 12 months. Depends on manufacture and other factors I introduce you later. The reason that a lot of practitioners mean that their curates last longer is probably because they don't sharpen them often enough. They sharpen them very seldom, maybe just one to two times a year, which is not enough. All sharpened instruments exhibit over 20% loss of the original width or length, and they are ready to be retired. So, how to control? You need to have a loop. We use a microscope at our school. As uh, you can see here on this slide, you need to compare the same design of instruments to assess the metal loss. The thickness and the width of different instruments' facial surfaces is not the same with, if you are working with a standard or mini or micro instrument, it can be different. And you can see two different curates in this picture. They can be compared. You need to take two instruments with the same design. The small one here is obviously over sharpened. Obviously, there is no magic time frame for instrument replacement. 
as there are too many factors that impact longevity. However, here are some variables. I talked already talked about frequency of use. But what I mean here, how many sets up of instruments are available and how many times per day each is used, as well as how many days per week are worked. Number two is difficulty of patients. Uh, we are talking about the amount and the tenacity of deposits. Use of ultrasonic devices, because some work just with hand instruments. If you are using this combination, it's a different amount in strokes you are using on one patient. One patient. Frequency of uh, sharpening, as well as uh, proficiency in sharpening. Because if you don't um, have a good uh, sharpening technique, you're going to make some errors about angulation uh, using uh, your sharpening stone, and then you are removing a lot of uh, metal material. So you need to improve your sharpening techniques. Use instruments only for their intended use. For instance, don't use your scales to open toothbrush packages or something like this. So now it's time for summarizing conclusions and uh, recommendations. I would recommend that you take an instrument or just refresh instrument sharpening course to improve. We hold today's uh, course in uh, Copenhagen in January and uh, I can do it in Danish and in English. Sharpen at the first signs of dullness. So you don't need to use heavy pressure or remove, or remove much metal to get a sharp edge. It's very important. As you could see, uh, not all of us, uh, many of us don't have time for sharpening. In spite, we know that we need to sharpen. Control instruments frequently with loops to look uh, for thinning in the wrist or legs. Keep a new instrument on hand to compare with all instruments. Or consider replacement after 20% reduction in size. A good idea would be to arrange the purchase of new instruments when you know they needed to be replaced. So you are not replacing that all at once. It's going to be quite expensive. You can see here on this picture, I love this picture. It's uh, our students learning for the first time last year how to compare dull and new instruments using the microscope. Um, you don't really need uh, the, this kind of microscope. We have another with just um, uh, 40 time. Uh, but uh, you, loops are just fine, I think. I would like now to thank you for your attention and I will be very happy to answer your questions. I hope you have some at the end of this session. Thank you. That was it for today then, and if we have some questions, I am ready to answer them now. Thank you very much, Tatiana. Very interesting material. So, uh, also, as yeah. mentioned, uh, if you have a question now, now's the time to either uh, raise your hand and we'll able to unmute you and you can ask your question. But the other option is to type it in on the right hand side. There's a field for questions. And by doing so, I can then read them here uh, for Tatiana. And we have uh, some questions here. Uh, the first one is, hello, how long is the spam life for sharpened free instruments? Yes, as I told you, it's a uh longer because uh, the very resistant of sharpen free instrument is uh, shown to be in different uh, experience uh, shown to be much uh, longer uh, than the standard uh, steel instruments but it depends lifespan of uh, the sharpen free instrument depends of how many instruments you have or you are working with very severe periodontal patients or you are just making this certain means patient where you are using 15 up to 14 strokes. It depends on this. 
but there is no study which shows how long time because they need to be at the same clinic with the same practitioners with the same patient with the same kind of uh, calculus so this study is quite Im impossible but you need to understand when you are taking these uh, precautions and you know all these factors it's gonna last longer comparing with the regular instruments the problem is the regular instrument just doesn't be replaced. They don't be replaced often enough. We are working on these instruments I showed you in this picture uh, were actually sent to be resharpened to the special services, you know. So the practitioners thought that they could be used, but they couldn't. I hope it was the answer for your question. Yeah, this actual uh, follow-up question to that. So they are perfect for those who have no time to sharpen the instruments. I think it's uh, perfect for those uh, practitioners who, who don't uh, have this time for sharpening. But uh, at least a combination of different uh, instruments because uh, AM uh, provides uh, different instruments in this uh, rigid design and uh, it's a pity we don't use them a lot especially with you don't use ultrasonic designs uh, that often it's very nice to to make a combination and what I advise to make this combination but uh, the sharp and free instrument is more rigid um, uh, comparing with the standard ones. So you can put a little bit more pressure on this and they keep much longer, especially this very, very fine mini scales and mini curates. It's just a pleasure working with them. And sometimes uh, when my students will work with um, uh, uh, regular scalar uh, standard scales and uh, I can uh, come and just show and for them with a uh, sharp and free instrument just to compare and say wow they can feel the difference and a uh, patient can obviously feel the difference you are not putting as much patience it's very nice okay thank you uh, there's a question how do you evaluate 20% erosion without comparing physically? Yeah, we discussed these questions the last two years with, uh, <laughs> with my colleagues uh, because um, you, you don't have this uh, guide for measuring. Uh, it needed to be compared with using a loop or microscope and uh, you can't be quite sure if it is 20% or 25 but when you can see that the sides, the lateral sides of instruments, uh, they are, you need to compare with your new instrument. And they just, just to have a clue, okay, it's about a quarter of instruments, uh, facial and lateral um, surface is uh, removed. Then you need to consider, maybe you need to order some new instruments because they're not effective anymore. Okay, thank you. Uh, are LM sharp and free instruments actually sharper than conventional instruments or is the best or is the benefit that they are sharp? Uh, what is my experience is very sharp instruments. Uh, but I didn't uh, read any study about comparing with uh, sharpness. And uh, it, it's not what most important for me. What is most important for me is they, they keep this sharpened a long of time, really a uh, long time. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. Then there's a question, what defines the erosion, type of materials, etc. If we are taking about uh, erosion, uh, I pro you probably mean the uh, wear resistance. But we, if we are taking about erosions, so you need to be very aware about uh, maintaining your instruments and to follow this uh, manufacturer's uh, recommendation. Uh, we are only sterilized instrument is a special cassettes because when you are sterilizing instruments which are sharp and free, they 
uh, they may not touch another uh, instruments uh, to keep longer and uh, we are careful not to drop in them in the floor because it can also damage instrument we are very careful about this and uh, what i love using i recommend to students to be careful about uh, uh, blood deposits on the instruments at the end of work you need to sterilize them quite uh, often, but it's uh, about all the instruments. Corrosion of instruments um, can be provoked by, uh, can be worsened by blood on, on the metal. It's about all instruments, not only about uh, sharpened tree instruments. But uh, I'm not quite sure I understood the whole question. If, if it's not so, you can uh, supply with another one, please. Yes, thank you. Um, <coughs> what is the material strength difference between carbon steel and steel? Um, uh, I'm not uh, in the developing of uh, different steels. What I know is that the steel is different and combination of uh, this parts in this uh, steel, it's uh, different in different uh, manufacturers. And uh, to be particular, you need to contact uh, LM who's working for the developing in this uh, in this product. But I know that the, the steel quality is uh, improved uh, largely for the last 20 years. And if it's uh, in 1996, it was um, recommended to remove this after another time. So the recommendation is changed because the Improving the steel of quality is uh, also uh, changed. So the modern instruments, uh, modern instruments were resistant uh, is uh, higher than it was for 20 years ago. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you try sharpen sharpen free instrument, will it damage the coating permanently? That's right. That's right. Uh, you are damaging the coating, and uh, that's why it's not recommended to, to sharpen these instruments. It's also time to replace it because it's worn down. Um, thank you. Any study available correlating number of sterilization affecting the life of instruments, especially sharpened free? Yes, it would be very nice to to make the study, and uh, probably we consider making the study at uh, our school because we can register how many times uh, we sterilize the instrument, and uh, we have this conversation about it doing it maybe next year uh, when we have about um, uh, seventy, eighty cassettes when we can replace all instruments and uh, put only sharpened free instrument in cassettes we are doing it next year so all these cassettes uh, our using gonna, uh, our students going to receive is going to be with sharpened free instruments uh, universal create and uh, a scale uh, sharpened free so maybe we can answer your question in two years or two and a half years how many sterilization uh, is needed to be to damage this surface because no studies, yes. Not uh, which I know. <coughs> okay, thank you. Uh, and also to remind everyone, so if you have questions, please type them in uh, on the right hand side and we'll be able to ask them. Uh, here's another question. Uh, please speak on the difference uh, in the use of shaving strokes with LM Sharp Diamond instruments. Uh, this definition of about shaving strokes uh, was discussed uh, a lot also by Anna Partisan. It's my star dentist hygienist. I learned about uh, a lot from her because uh, what is important when you're doing the strokes is that you are not shaving the calculus. You are removing it. That's why this uh, cotton edge, you perfectly uh, sharp cutting edge is important that, uh, to bite in, to remove, uh, to remove the deposits instead of just sharpening and uh, 
Bernician calculus. But I know sometimes we are talking about sharpening it, but we mean just removing it. So if you see it's in advertisements, so it's because it means to remove just lay by lay. But I would say it's not shaving, it's just biting in. So it's a difference in terminology, probably our expression. But yes, it's uh, it's sharp as a shape, so that's why probably it is going to be used like this. So I'm not talking about shaving, I'm talking about removing and biting in and uh, removing and losing deposits. Okay, thank you. What combination of dental instrument do you use the most? For example, 13, 14, 11, slash 12, 7, slash 8 scalar. Okay. If uh, the patient with uh, focus about uh, 2 to 3 millimeters, I use uh, universal instruments. And uh, it depends on the recession. Uh, the last instruments uh, I love to use, it's this um, uh, synthet, anterior and posterior synthet. It's for regular uh, scaling. And uh, if the patient have uh, pockets um, uh, more than four millimeters or five or deeper, I love using uh, grazing rates. I start um, with ultrasonic and then uh, I'm doing this uh, regularly using crazy rates when I'm taking one uh, quadrat at a time, starting with 13 and 14, continue with 11 to 12 crazy rates. Then I'm using one or two excess uh, rates, um, finishing the facial and palatal sides with seven, eight, checking with um, Always, always finishing with universal scale accurate because I love this just the last finish and do it very well. I'm taking mini and I'm going all the approximate uh, rooms and always controlling the scaling, the result of my scaling using the Explore 1112. Uh, we have two kinds of this Explore in our school and um, one is the Explore and another is Flex 4. Uh, when I have patients with uh, not too uh, much deposits, I'm using Flexplore. It's very, very thin and you need to be uh, quite experienced about using this one. But Explore is very nice for beginning, for checking uh, uh, your scaling or also checking the detecting, detecting calculus. And we are, uh, use quite a lot of time on teaching students using this uh, Explore technique. So in in this uh, in this order, if the patient have a lot of deposits, very heavy deposits, I again uh, maybe uh, discoloration start uh, always start with uh, air polishing. It makes uh, calculus a little bit uh, dry. Then I'm going with ultrasonic uh, with uh, very uh, residual calculus. Uh, I love using piles. And uh, then continue with uh, graces. But the type of graces, it also depends on calculus structure. That's why I my scaling depends on what kind of patient I have in the chair and uh, what kind of uh, consistency of structure of deposits. I love combination of different instruments, but I would recommend use a little bit more of uh, uh, sharpen free instruments because it's a little bit more rigid and if you don't uh, can't afford to, uh, this one at least uh, consider using a lot, little bit more rigid instrument to preserve your hands but uh, about scaling i can uh, i can talk uh, a lot of hours in which combination which instruments because my favorite topic <laughs> okay Thank you very much. Uh, then it's related a bit to this. So which sharpen free sickle scalar is your favorite to scale interproximal areas? Uh, there are different uh, different uh, scales uh, you can use. And uh, 
right now I'm very proud about this um, uh, micro uh, micro scale and uh, mini scale. It's for usual scale and regular scale and added treatments. They're good about uh, very tight proximal uh, proximal rooms. They are they are perfect. But uh, I know all another scales too, and uh, sometimes uh, I love using another scales for posterior areas. Is uh, yeah. Uh, we have uh, a lot of them. That's the uh, primer too. It's uh, this mini and uh, micro screen. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much. Are there any additional questions? If you have a question, please type them in, and and we'll be able to ask them. At the moment, I don't have additional questions here. Wait a while. Also, if you want to ask verbally, you can raise your hand and I'll be able to unmute you. Seems that there are no additional questions. Yes, but it was very, very nice once, and uh, it was uh, exciting to answer. And uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for your questions and for your attention. Yes, and I also want to say so. So thank you very much, Tatiana, for taking the time to organize these webinars with us. It has been a real pleasure listening to you and and the topics. It's really interesting topic and i'm sure also for that and important very very important uh, topic because it's very important for us dental practitioners to to take care of ourselves and our hands and we can make some differences in our work and day it would be very nice because some things are very easy to implement i think and thank you then for your assistance and thank you to lm to organizing of this webinars. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And also a reminder, so the, the recording of this webinar will be placed on the website. So if you want to share it with your colleagues or you want to revisit it, you will be able to do so by, by visiting the website and, and finding the recording there. Uh, after this session, you will get a survey. Uh, and we appreciate if you take some time to reply to the survey and the I think the most important question there is that what additional topics would you like us to cover uh, in these type of webinars? So if you have topics you want to uh, suggest for us, we're happy to, to take them into consideration and try to organize a webinar on that topic. So thank you everyone for listening in and thank you once again, Tatiana, for, for uh, presenting this interesting topic and have a good rest of the day. Thank you, too. Thank you. The same to you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.